Everything that we have today came from an idea of the past. How these ideas came about usually aren't known, but they give birth to impressive inventions that go on to carry humanity for many decades after that. That is what history is all about. But sometimes we forget about important stories in history. Welcome back to the Told You Another Story channel. In this video, we'll be looking at the story of the brave spacewoman Valentina Tereshkova. History is filled with great men and women who made very important moves that propelled the work to where it is today. These men and women worked in various fields and did various things that made society thank them many years later. One of these great people is Valentina Tereshkova. Valentina Tereshkova was born on March 6, 1937, in the Bolshoi Maslenikovo, a village on the Volga River, which is 170 miles northeast of Moscow and a part of the Yaroslav Oblast in central Russia. Her parents had migrated from Belarus, and her father, Vladimir Tereshkov, used to be a tractor driver before he became a sergeant in command of a tank in the Soviet army. He met his demise in the Finnish Winter War during the Second World War when Valentina was just two years old. Valentina's mother, Elena Fyodorovna Tereshkova, had three children, and after her father's death, she moved the family to Yaroslav, searching for a better employment opportunity and became employed at the Karsny Perikop cotton mill. Valentina was first registered in school at the age of 10 and graduated at 17. She started working at a tire factory and moved on to work at a textile mill, but she continued her education by taking correspondence courses. She later graduated from the Light Industry Technical School in 1960. Valentina also became interested in parachuting from a young age and got skydiving training from a local aero club making her first jump on May 21, 1959, at age 22. While still working at the textile mill, she trained as a competitive parachutist, even though she kept this part of her life a secret from her family. She also joined the Communist Youth League in Yaroslav and served as the secretary of the organization in 1960 and 1961. She later became a member of the Communist Party in 1962. Her skydiving experience actually contributed to her selection as a cosmonaut, even though she wasn't really interested in it at first. After Yuri Gagarin's spaceflight in 1961, the director of cosmonaut training, Nikolai Kamenin, read in the American media that female pilots were training to be astronauts. He wrote in his diary, We cannot allow that the first woman in space will be American. This would be an insult to the patriotic feelings of Soviet women. He was given the approval to place five female cosmonauts in the next group, which would start training in 1963. To increase the chances of sending a Soviet woman into space first, the female cosmonauts began their training before the male cosmonauts. According to the rules, the potential cosmonaut was required to be a parachutist under 30 years of age, less than 5 feet 7 inches in height, and no more than 154 pounds in weight. By January 1962, the All-Union Voluntary Society for Assistance to the Army, Air Force and Navy had selected 400 candidates to be considered. And after the first screening, only 58 of those candidates met the requirements, which Nikolai Kamenin later reduced to 23. On February 16, 1962, Valentina was selected along with four other candidates to join the female cosmonaut corps. Since they had no prior military experience, the female cosmonauts started with the rank of private in the Soviet Air Forces. Their training included thermochamber tests, isolation tests, decompression chamber testing, centrifuge tests, and pilot training in MiG-15 UTI jet fighters. Valentina underwent water recovery training at sea, in which several motorboats were used to disrupt the water so as to simulate the rough conditions of space travel. She also began learning at the Zhukovsky Air Force Engineering Academy and graduated a few years after her flight. The group spent many months in basic training, and after that was over, and they had passed an examination, Nikolai Kamenin offered them the option to be commissioned as regular Air Force officers. With advice from the male cosmonauts, they chose to accept Nikolai Kamenin's offer, as it would make it more difficult for the program to get rid of them after the initial flight. All five female cosmonauts became junior lieutenants in the Air Force in December 1962. Of the five women, Tatyana Kuznetsova was ineligible for the flight as she became ill and Zana Yorkina wasn't doing too well in training, leaving Valentina Irina Solovyova and Valentina Ponomaryova as the leading candidates. The original plan was to launch two women into space on solo Vostok flights, 
on consecutive days in March or April 1963, and it was proposed that Valentina would launch first in Vostok 5, while Valentina Ponomariova would follow her into orbit in Vostok 6. However, this flight plan was changed in March 1963 as Vostok 5 was set to carry a male cosmonaut, Valery Baikovsky. Flying alongside a female cosmonaut aboard Vostok 6, both to be launched in June 1963. The State Space Commission at the meeting on May 21st nominated Valentina Tereshkova to pilot Vostok 6. Nikolai Kamenin called her Gagarin in the skirt. She was promoted to lieutenant before embarking on her flight and captain mid-flight. On the morning of June 16, 1963, Valentina and her backup, Irina Solovyova, were both dressed in spacesuits and driven by bus to the launch pad. Following the tradition set by Yuri Gagarin, Valentina also urinated on the bus tire, becoming the first female to do so. After a two-hour countdown, the Vostok 6 space shuttle was launched faultlessly, and Valentina became the first woman in space. To date, she remains the only female cosmonaut to have flown into space solo, and at age 26, the youngest. Her call sign on this flight was Chaika, which meant seagull, and in commemoration of her, this name was later conferred on an asteroid, 1671 Chaika. After her launch, Valentina radioed down saying, It is I, seagull. Everything is fine. I see the horizon. It's sky blue with a dark strip. How beautiful the Earth is. Everything is going well. Vostok 6 spent three days in orbital planes, 30 degrees away from Vostok 5, which launched two days before her, and during her first orbit, they approached each other within 3.1 miles. Although the two space shuttles were able to communicate by radio, they couldn't be sure if they saw each other. Cameras placed inside both spacecraft transmitted live footage that was broadcast on Soviet state television. Valentina also maintained a flight log and took pictures of the horizon, which were later used to identify aerosol layers within the atmosphere. In this single spaceflight, she logged more flight time than the combined total of all American astronauts who had flown before her. Her mission was used to pursue medical studies on humans in spaceflight and provide comparative data about the effects of space travel on women. Although Valentina felt nausea and physical discomfort for a large part of the flight, she orbited the Earth 48 times, spending two days, 24 hours, and 50 minutes in space. She could also claim to have made the first bowel movement in space, which occurred on the second day of her flight. As planned in all Vostok missions, Valentina ejected from the capsule during its descent at about 4 miles above the Earth and made a parachute landing 385 miles northeast of Karaganda, Kazakhstan at 8.20 a.m. UTC on June 19th. According to the Russian newspaper Pravda, a million flowers were brought in to celebrate the success of their dual space flights and greet the cosmonauts in Moscow. On June 22, 1963, Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev greeted Valery Baikovsky dressed in his uniform and Valentina Treshkova, who was dressed in civilian attire. In front of the thousands in attendance, the Soviet Premier also announced that both cosmonauts should be awarded the Hero of the Soviet Union Medal. Not more than a week after her return from space, Moscow hosted the International Women's Congress on June 24, where Valentina and Valery Baikovsky were greeted by a crowd of around 2,000 women from 119 countries. Of all the Russian cosmonauts, Valentina received the most requests to visit foreign countries. Her trips in particular required pre-approval from the Ministry of Defense, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and the KGB and eventually were authorized by the Presidium of the Central Committee of the Communist Party, the highest political bureau in the Soviet Union. After her spaceflight, Valentina Treshkova became a national and international role model, and she even went on to have a very prosperous political career, currently serving as a member of the Russian State Duma. Thank you for watching this video. Hit us up in the comment section and give us a thumbs up if you liked the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos.